So we've looked at a lot about sort of like the theory using YouTube and such. Um, we'll put it into practice about what are some tips to try to get followers and traffic and such. Now, I have um, a video that you could use as an example because the only way to get the most out of YouTube then is by actually uploading a video. Um, so I have a video that you could borrow. Now if you're doing this on your own account and such, you probably don't want the video because it's a video that I created uh, and then it's nothing related to what yours, your company would be or anything like that. But um, if you do want to use it um, inside of the network folder, so in computer classroom data, uh, okay, I guess it's still back on social two. Video examples. I have a video there. Uh, video example final. So um, you could use that on the Z drive. Z as in zebra. And then from social two, I had video example final. And so this video that, that I have there is something that I created. If you were here on a previous class, we, we created this video together. We did the editing, we removed mistakes, we added text, we added music. So here's a video to work with. Again, if your channel isn't about uh, you know technology or whatever that video is, you don't want to use this because then it doesn't relate to you. You can delete it, of course. But just to show you what you would need to do if you have a video, I'm going to copy this to the desktop. I'm just going to drag it and copy it, and then uh, in in YouTube we have that upload button. Um, here it is, it changed again. On the other screen that I saw, it had a little camera icon. And now here I see that it has an upload arrow. So clicking either that upload button or. I'm sorry, if you're right. Right. No, I left it in social two. I forgot oh, to put it in social three. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to click the button there on the top right. Either it's going to be the icon that directly is to upload, or it might be a little camera, and then it'll have two options. One is go live or upload. But there's that upload button on the top right, and then it'll ask you, OK, select your video. So if you click on the. It's not obvious, but if you click on that up icon, that'll then let you click to select the video. So I copied it to the desktop. Now we have very fast internet connections, so I finished uploading faster than I finished talking. At home, you're going to run into the issue that usually most of us don't have a very fast internet connection and it's going to take a while. The video was only a minute and a half long, but it uploaded like literally in two seconds. Even it, So if my video was five minutes or ten minutes or even longer, it takes a while. Um, our internet connection, uh, oftentimes when we get these speeds from AT&T or whatever, they're always advertising how fast your speed is for downloads. They never mention really uploads. So download is, I'm going to go watch their video and it downloads to me really fast. But upload then is the opposite. I'm uploading my video to YouTube and most likely you don't have very good upload speeds at home. Here at the college we have very, very good upload speeds. So in my case, the other day I uploaded a video that was 20 minutes long and I think it said it took about three hours to upload. Obviously, I was not sitting in front of my computer for three hours. I went to go do other things in my life. And then when I came back three hours later, it was uploaded. So that's very common that when you upload videos that are very long, you know, longer than 10 minutes, it takes a while. 
unless you know that you've paid for very fast upload speeds, which are usually expensive. So if you're going to be uploading a lot of videos to YouTube and such, you, you're going to suffer when it's time to upload. So question, is it because of your uh, internet service provider? Yeah. The internet service provider. Not from, not from YouTube side. Not from YouTube side. YouTube is very fast. It's from your provider, exactly. From Cox, AT&T, etc. That's the problem, how fast they allow the upload. Okay, so from this screen, I have various options. I've selected to upload. It's processing it. It uploaded very quickly, but then now it's processing, meaning it's scanning to see if there's any copyrighted material and all of that. Well, while I'm here, I also have the space to fill in the title. Oh, look at that. It filled in my title, it filled in my description, and it filled in some keywords. So, um, again, I'm able to change, I'm able to delete all of this however I want, or use it as a starting point. So if I did leave it as Victor's Tips, you know, I could write Victor's Tips, um, how to, what was that video even about? Um, Social media tip. Okay, that'll be fine. So Victor's tips, how to use social media. Okay, so here's the first tip for getting traffic and such. Um, okay, so now it's not a side note anymore. I'll bring it up here. How to get views. Here's more. How to get found on YouTube. Create a title. with keywords complete sentences so in that title I'm not simply going to write keywords of tip uh, social media uh, Twitter I'm not gonna just write keywords I'm gonna write a sentence how to get more followers on Twitter so I'll say here bad Twitter tips followers good how to get more followers on Twitter good bad good better um, how small businesses can get more followers on Twitter. That is better because it has more keywords. Small businesses. Let's say I'm a web design company and I want people to find me on YouTube. So I'm going to put videos about web design. But I'm going to put videos out there in terms of I want people to find these videos. Uh, on TV, on regular old television, um, most of us probably watch television the shows that we know that we want to watch that we've got recorded uh, does anyone nowadays as much as before just browse channels you just sit down and browse channel what's on this channel what's on that channel people still do it of course but not as much as before I have the seven shows that I watch recorded and I'm gonna watch those we don't quite browse channels anymore like we used to so same thing online uh, people want to watch a certain video. They're not just going to randomly click and maybe watch your video. They'll never find your video that way. They're going to search. So when you put in these keywords, I'm a small business, and I want to get on Twitter, and I'm going to search for how to use Twitter for small businesses. Maybe a person searches exactly that, how to use Twitter if you're a small business. That could be a possible title I could use. Or this one, because it's got small business, keyword, Twitter keyword, followers keyword. So that's your first thing to do in the title. Figure out, uh, I can also word it like this, can you create your title as a question people are searching? So it's perfectly valid to do that. You put a question as your title. How do I succeed in real estate? That's a perfectly good title. You could uh, answer your own question and, and be like, 
uh, succeed in real estate through this one weird tip. You know, something like that. You could have those various keywords and phrasing however you want of what people are searching. Question? Yeah, um, okay, so this is, we're talking about the title, right? Which is kind of what you had originally put in under the community or wherever we had originally said yeah. first tips. So you're talking about like replacing that with this new title? Is that weird? No, that community is not a title. That community is uh, where it's stored in their organization. No, so, okay, so, well, sorry, I can't quite remember exactly. Let me pull it up. I, I can also, I can open it both at once. So let me go back to that screen. Um, but you're just, you're talking anyhow about just the, a whole new title. Is that what you're saying? Okay, I'm back on that same screen. So you're saying the category? Replace the category? No, 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 no. So how do you, yeah, so the title. So you've got Victor's tips, and now... I thought that was kind of a, what you were trying to get at originally was keeping some consistency, like I guess almost like the branding name, almost like that, you know, like SNL had a dash at the end, SNL, so they would have like their brand in the title. But now we're talking about coming up with more of a SEO friendly title. No, I'm, it's all the same thing. So look what I have here. I still have Victor's tips, okay. and then I'm figuring out the SEO friendly part. Okay. okay. Yeah, so I'm doing both. Okay. I could do either or or both. If I want to continue the branding, I can keep that there. Or if I only want to put the SEO friendly sentence, I could do that. Or both. Okay, gotcha. Just sure. mm -hmm. What I could do, if this gets a little too unwieldy, how small businesses can get followers, and my name right here, I could move this over to the description. Because it's still going to be part of all of the searchable aspect of my video. So maybe for it to look cleaner, just the subject, just the title of the video, and then also then the little bit of branding and such in the description. So I think I'll do it that way, like this. Um, Yes. Well, I'm about to go, go through all of these, yes. So description, uh, same sort of idea. I have uh, the ability to uh, write whatever I want here with active links and such. Let me make a, a bunch of notes here regarding, um, regarding descriptions. Add your URLs to the description. So they will be active links. Uh, any links you put in the description, people can click to watch, to go to that site. So uh, let's say uh, I'm doing this, these tips. Small businesses can get more followers on Twitter. But I'm also writing something like, uh, download our free ebook here. And then I've got the link, victorstips.com ebook see that so we're giving them more stuff uh, it's not just the video but there in the description it shows an active link to go get the ebook or doesn't make sense here but click to get 10% off your next order and then I've got victorsbakery.com order 25 off so whatever address I have here will be active, and whatever way I can then further entice them to act is good. Yes? Does the quality will be changed after upload? No. The quality of the video, if you upload it in a high quality HD, it should not alter your video. A person can choose to watch it in lower quality if they have a low quality connection, but your video should always be in high quality when you upload it. Okay, so regarding description also, at your own description, uh, no limit. Write everything. But keep in mind, read more. By default, you can write 10,000 words. But maybe only the first 20 are visible. 
until I think it's actually show more. Until they click show more, the rest of your 9,000 words won't appear. Keep that in mind, meaning meaning put the most important stuff first, the most important text first. Um, I, I can't exactly tell you how long that is, but looking at the examples, uh, I'm going to go to someone else's uh, site. Okay, uh, how to make slime? Okay, that's that popped up. Okay, so let's say I, I'm going to look at the first result. You see how we've got here: make slime with no glue or borax. Insane. Okay, that's the first thing they see. That's what the first thing that everyone sees. I can click show more and then it says all of this hey OMG thank you guys more than 30 30 thousand subscribers I can't believe it should I do more giveaways etc lots of smiley faces do you guys like clear slime so they this person wrote all of that there let me just jump to some other some other one over here uh, okay I'm kawaii toy collector I love kawaii things kawaii equals cute in Japanese I also love toys that's when Kawaii Toy Collector came in. Okay, so very generically, nothing about this video, just about their brand. So within these first three lines, they wrote what they wanted, and then if I have the time, or if I even notice, I can click Show More, and I see a little bit more, P.O. Box Toy Collector. So you can send them something in the mail. Uh, frequently asked questions. So they wrote, I'm 14 years old, I'm, I have an iPod, and all of that. Let's see another one over here. Now that's the same company. Uh, Gil Bauer over here, four easy DIY slimes. Okay, so after the ad, four easy DIY slimes without glue, etc. Free clue app. Click there. Show more more text. So what I'm getting at is there's a little bit, and this has a lot, 10 fun things to do when you're bored, 10 life hacks you've never seen, 4 easy do-it-yourself slime recipes. So this included a lot of extra links if I did then go to show more. So approximately the first three lines are what's going to be visible first. So when I'm creating mine over here, Download our ebook. Click here for coupon, etc., etc., etc. Some of it is going to be cut off. So I think approximately what you first see in this box is what they will see without having to click show more. So keep in mind show more. Put the most important text first within the first three lines. Yes. 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 YouTube um, truncates it exactly. Yeah, they manage that. Um, okay. Here's a here's an advanced tip. Um, advanced tip. You can generate chapter stops. For your long videos. When you're watching a DVD or a Blu-ray, you can skip from chapter to chapter. You can say, I want to see only the good part, and you jump to that part of the movie. You can do that here in YouTube as well. For some of these videos that I make really long, they're usually in sections, and a person is interested in the in the part that happens in at minute three. They don't want to watch the first two minutes where I'm introducing things. They want to jump straight to something. Or maybe I'm doing a review and people just want to get my final thoughts. So we can have them jump to the last 12th minute of the 15 minute video. The way we do that is simply write a time code, which I'll show you what that means in a moment. But you can write a time code to have an active link so that people can click on this time code and it'll automatically jump to the point in time of the video. Write the time code. It will be an active link to that moment. Examples. 
So if I want to jump 1 minute and 12 seconds into my video, 0, 1, colon, 12. If I want to jump over to the 7th minute, 50 second, second, 0, 7, 52. If I want to jump to the 36th second of my video, 0, 0, 36. I have an hour-long video, and I want to jump into 17 minutes and 17 seconds. 17 minutes, 17 seconds. You just have to write it right here. But the way I would do it is like this. Perhaps mark chapters. Make it obvious that what follows are chapters. Then, this, this video is only a minute and a half, but if I write 0, 0, 22, and then I write a note, um, tip 1. And then at 1 minute and 2 seconds, I have second advice. So the, the part that matters is the time code. After that is all optional. I think it's a good idea to write, what are you going to see when you jump to that moment in time? If you watch a DVD or a Blu-ray, sometimes the Blu-ray or the video the, the, the DVD, it gives you the chapter you're going to jump to and a name of the chapter. So that's what we're doing here. If you have a one minute long video and you say jump to five minutes, I think it just jumps straight to the very end because there's nothing past one minute. Something secret. So if you try to go past the length of your video, I think it just jumps you right to the end of the video. So be careful about that. So um, after we, I click Publish, so it's still waiting for me to publish this. No one will see it until I publish it. After I publish it, that's when it will then uh, make those active. Um, let me see if I can find an example. Investing tips for beginners. So those like anchor links or jump links or whatever, they're they're activated through this, not in your editing. You're not setting it in your iMovie. Or exactly. You you need to know when to jump into it so you can use iMovie and such to keep track of that. But um, you these are created simply by writing a time code, wow. and then YouTube creates it for you, it creates an active link. Um, let me see, can I find an example? Okay, over here. What to do with your refund check? If you get a refund check, here it is. So, the whole video itself is um, eight minutes long. And then, so here, okay, at 45 seconds, one of the things you can do is spend it on something fun. At one minute 25, invest in a hot stock. At 428, contribute to an IRA. At seven minutes eight seconds, a recap of everything. So if I don't want to have if I don't have time to watch eight whole minutes, I can jump down to minute seven and it will then recap the whole video briefly. So YouTube recognizes just by coding it like that, zero zero call it forty five. Yeah. Either or notice over here. 0, 1, 25, 1 minute 25, or without the leading 0. So just putting in the time code, even in without the leading 0, is active. So I'll do that. I'll click on this, and it jumps me right there to 6 minutes 33 seconds. There it is right there. So this is a video that I made about money. And so it jumped me, it jumped the user straight to that moment. Yep, it recognizes it. It makes it active simply by uh, you putting in a time code. So the, the keyword is chapter and stack. No, this is not even necessary either. No, nope. the, what's necessary is only the time. But I here I tried to make it obvious that these are the chapters of the video. Uh, you could word it in any other way. You know, what's another? How can we also word this? Um, sections. We can write sections. So anything that explains to the user, what is this? People will see this and say, I don't even know what that means. 102, what is that? Some people won't get that. 
So if you explain this is a section of my video, click here to go look at that. You can say table of contents. Yeah. So, you know, you can write it all in capital, table of contents. Whatever seems obvious, uh, that that's what those are. Those are the sections. Those are, that's the table of contents. These are the areas of my video. So for longer videos, this is useful. What's cool about that is that um, it gives people the choice themselves to browse through the video. It, they might not have uh, eight whole minutes, but once you divide this up into um, the different uh, sections, it would entice people to jump what they care about, jump to what they care about, and, and they might say, well, this that I thought was most important looks good. I liked it. Let me go back, actually. Maybe these other things are also good. And it'll keep people on your video, jumping back and forth, perhaps keeping them longer on your video. And therefore, uh, pro uh, you, you win about what you're trying to get. Are you trying to profit off of your YouTube? Are you trying to get simply views? Are you trying to get subscribers? Are you trying to get um, sales? In this particular one, there's also, so this is the example that there's the music credit. This one required to have the attribution. So there it is. And then here's, send us an email through our link to get a TD Ameritrade promotional offer. So that's got a link there for people to follow. Yes. So is the music credit, does that go into the description? Yes. Because the music that credit is attached to, the, I mean, this song is attached to this video, it has to be included with this video. Uh, these tags now are, uh, again, per video. What would be the keywords that people might be searching for? Uh, you can duplicate what you've written anywhere else if you want, but this is those keywords throughout the title and the description are already searchable. So here's another place where you can add more tags, more keywords for people to find you with that don't necessarily fit into the other areas. So um, if this was social media, uh, here what's not so obvious is that what you should do is when you type here, then you press comma, and then that's a keyword because if here's what people do when they're beginners social media Twitter Facebook they think that each one of them is a separate search term actually because I never pressed comma eventually after I move my mouse out of this box it will think okay you mean social media Twitter Facebook if someone is searching that phrase no, I meant people to search for social media, comma, Twitter, comma, Facebook. So I'm just saying, type your keyword, press comma, and then it makes it a keyword. Social media is two words, so that's when I would comma, and that's a keyword. You can remove it. That, I don't have a full answer for that because it used to be that you would search social media stuff in Google and you would get results from the social networks. Then Google stopped that because then they had their own social network and they don't want to give uh, free publicity to Facebook. But then recently they've reintroduced some of that but for Twitter only. So I don't have a full answer about what happens when you search on the search engines. I can tell you, however, that when you search in the social network, these hashtags, then you get relevant results. So outside of the social networks, I don't quite know. But in the social networks, I know that it is very valuable to use these keywords and hashtags to get found in the social networks. Now, you can add hashtags in um, YouTube. But what that does is that will create an active link 
And if someone clicks that, it will search all of YouTube for videos that use that hashtag. So unless your other videos also use this hashtag, you're going to give free publicity to other people's videos. So I sort of don't recommend to use hashtags in YouTube. I think there you give too much free publicity to other accounts. They don't, the, the, the culture of YouTube, the, they don't quite use hashtags like on Twitter or, or any other network. This is like linking every video with this hashtag, so you better be using a hashtag that only your videos have, but no one knows that hashtag because they don't know your video, so they won't find your hashtag. So it's sort of like, don't even bother with hashtags in YouTube. These tags are sort of hashtags, but you do them in YouTube's way, and this, this works a lot better. So I would say, uh, don't bother with hashtags in descriptions. Too much downside. Hashtags over in Twitter, they work amazing, amazingly, so use them there. You know, you could promote your video on, on Twitter. You can combine all of these networks. Today we talked about YouTube, but when we talked about Twitter, well, now that I know YouTube and Twitter, I can use Twitter to promote my YouTube, or maybe I can make YouTube videos about Twitter and cross-pollinate. Yes, in Twitter, uh, you can add the link to your video. Uh, notice here it says, your video will be live here. So every, every video has an address on Twitter. So you can copy and paste that. Copy and paste it into Twitter. In tags, uh, words or phrases that are multiple words. Uh, separate them by commas. This is just what I was saying that as I type social space media, comma, and then that becomes one tag. Possibly, yeah. Now they may be looking for media such as, you know, news media, television media. If someone is looking specifically for social media, I should group that as one tag. Other items here. Okay, here's the part about public, unlisted, private, and the fourth one, scheduled. So if I leave it as public, everyone can see it, everyone can search for it and find it. If I have it as unlisted, if they search for it, even the exact keywords, even the exact person and everything, they will not see it. They will not see this video if they go to your profile. The only way to get to an unlisted video is if they have the address. So this address that I put on an, on an email, on my website, on Twitter, that's the only way someone can find this video if I have it unlisted. Private, no one can see it except you, unless you go to share here and you have this email address system. Hmm, actually, did they change this? Can I put multiple? Can I put multiple emails here? Well, I guess it worked. Hmm, I guess that's an improvement. It looks like you can, if you set it to private and you share, I guess you can put in here a, a set of email addresses, copy and pasting a set of email addresses, and send this to all of these people at once. Again, it, I don't think it's as user-friendly as it could be. Now, if, you, if it's your video and you set that as private, can people on that private list then share that video? 
No, because they weren't approved. This is going to keep track of those that have been sent an email, and it's going to ask them. Uh, it's going to ask the person to sign in with that email address to view the video. So if John then watch, logged in and watched it, and they get the address and send it to someone else, they are not on the approved list, so they can't see it. And then the last one, which only appears when you upload a video, is scheduled. And this is straightforward. I want this one to appear next Tuesday at 10.15 at a.m. Pacific time. And so automatically, that will appear public at that time. Under scheduled and public, you have the ability to also tweet about it directly. If you connect your Twitter, you can write a Twitter message. It will automatically embed the video. And this will get tweeted out at the same time as it becomes public on YouTube. You can connect it to your Google Plus, and it will automatically go to Google Plus. And if you schedule, you can do one or the other, so that next week, this will automatically also tweet to say, check out my video, whatever you want, and it'll be the link to the video. Yes? So you said one or the other for schedule. Yeah, do both. No, I mean, uh, and or. And those are the only two that you can share automatically? These are the only two that are automatic. There is another way in just a moment to see it to go to Facebook, but not automatic. Right now, YouTube only has partnerships with Google+, Plus because it's the same company, and Twitter, because they don't see them as a threat. They used to be able to do Facebook, like five years ago, but they're not friends anymore, so you can't do it anymore. Instagram's off the, off the table as well, yeah. And then one more item here, playlist. So I've been mentioning playlists. I have no playlists at the moment. Uh, I can create one right here very easily. So I can say, OK, this is a social. I can have a playlist called Social Media Tips. So now this, this video will be in that. And this is also a searchable keyword. So my playlist are like uh, folders. I have this folder right here. And all the certain videos are in this folder with this name. I have another uh, organizational thing, and that's got its own name. Uh, well, in the real world, I can only have one file in one document or one organization. But in the digital world, I can have one file in more than one place. So I create another one here. Um, Monday Motivation. So I can have as many playlists as I want. And I can have a video in as many playlists as I want. So if someone's searching this keyword, they might find my playlist and my videos, or this keyword or whatever. And again, the point of playlists also is if I have lots of videos, you know, three, four, five, ten videos on a particular topic, they see one of those videos in the playlist, and YouTube will recommend, why not watch the other nine? So they keep watching your stuff instead of wandering off to someone else's videos. Playlists. Organize your videos into groups. You can have a video in more than one playlist. Playlists keep people focused on your content, they will auto-play once a person sees one video. When, when my current one minute long video ends, it will automatically go to the next one in the series, and I can organize them however I want. So if someone watches this one, then watches the next one, and so forth, until they run out, and then it goes off to someone else's video on someone else's account.
So all of that here is in this basic info under translations. Um, this translation is, here's the text in the description and the title set in English. And then I'm going to have a Spanish version of, of my translation. So I can go here and get Spanish. Spanish Latin America, Mexico, Spain, US. We'll do Spanish from Mexico. Now, this does not automatically take what I wrote in English and turn it into Spanish. That would be amazing. It doesn't take it from English and turn it into Japanese. That would be amazing. No, it gives you the space for you to add the Japanese translation of what your title and description is. But guess what? Um, they, uh, they, uh, they give you the ability to uh, put as many languages as you want. You just need someone to translate it. And um, they don't have it anymore, but they used to have a button here that says, click to find out more about Google translation services, which were not free. So I guess that's why they don't promote that anymore. You could pay them for someone professionally on YouTube to translate your description. I don't know for how much. I guess it was not popular because I don't see that option anymore. Yeah, there's ways around it. You can use the auto Google Translate and then massage it a little bit if you kind of know the language. You know, those auto translators oftentimes confuse the prepositions and the articles and such and the slang, but it's a good starting point to then you put the final polish on it. And hmm? sentence order. Yeah, sometimes sentence order is odd. Lastly, here under advanced, uh, this is stuff we already saw in the other settings, but allow comments, yes or no, approved, yes or no, all that common stuff. There's my location, so that zip code translated to an actual map coordinate. You could put recording date. I don't think this has any value. I've, I've tried it out with and without, and I don't really see any value of putting a recording date. Um, you have your, this video contains paid promotion, such as a paid product placement, sponsorship, or endorsement. Usually they don't. If it's your own product, it doesn't apply. Uh, age restriction. So if you've got content, uh, alcoholic content, um, adult content, etc., if you activate this, then that protects you and removes the liability in that, oh, uh, this little kid watched my video that shouldn't have. Well, if you activate that, it should have prevented the little kid from watching it. So if uh, that makes sense, you can turn that on. Yes? About the uh, recording date, sometimes, like, for example, if I search for a Photoshop tutorial, I kind of look to see uh, what's the date, so I get that latest. You automatically, it, it automatically at least adds, um, it automatically at least adds the date you published it. This is from one year ago versus four years ago, so yes, I'd probably go to the newer one. This, it automatically adds a date. Oh, so that has nothing to do with it. No. No, this, okay, I, I might have recorded this back in 2015 and I'm barely uploading it. It's not going to say, this video is from five years ago it's still gonna say it's from two minutes ago. So again, I don't see what too much of a value is on that because this doesn't even show up anywhere that I see. When you watch a video, you know, if I go watch that one, it, it, it published August 4th. Even if I said recorded on 2015, it's not gonna say that. They always say published on whatever. So I don't know where it shows that date. So probably only for the record of the publisher. A record for the publisher themselves, yeah. Most likely. So after all of that, I can then publish. It's processing it just a bit more. And then I see here. Here's the address to my video. I can then log into Facebook here to post it on Facebook. 
not automatically, I have to do it manually. I can send it over to Blogger, Reddit, Tumblr, Pinterest. It only automatically could publish it to Google Plus or Twitter. But because this is a video on the internet, I can use its unique address to share it anywhere I want. I can email it from here. Under email, put an email address, what's the message, and this is going to then send it to people. Let's see, can I add multiple people at once? Maybe. Victor.com is not, oops, I meant Victor.Victor. I guess you can put multiple email addresses here. So if you want to, you can put, if you, have a if you have a comma separated list of emails, you can copy and paste them here and you can send out an email blast. It's not exactly built for that. That's what SurveyMonkey, or not Survey, uh, MailChimp is for. But um, you can do that. And finally, embed. Uh, if, you, if I copy and paste this line of code, I can embed it into my website. It'll put the video directly on my website people can watch it right on my website uh, maybe I wrote an article on my website and I also attach the video and I have show more options where what's the size of the video uh, do you want the player controls and then the code changes as as appropriate When I go back to Creator Studio, now it shows I've got a video, no views, no comments, no thumbs up, but no thumbs down yet. And so using these tactics uh, to try to get followers as well as concepts from other networks, remember searching and all of that, then helps get you views.